he wrote the huge song, Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. It's just a really interesting story. I cannot believe that Sandra Oh is the person that is sitting there right now. Uh -huh. And we're all just about to just like serenade her. Lies is my most dream song by far. And I had no expectation that that was going to do anything. This is what I needed when I was starting my music career. This is the Logan Alexandra Show. I'm so excited because I'm a huge fan of yours. Mm. I love your music. I think you're so talented. Your songwriting is incredible. Everything you touch is gold. Thank and you, you. You do have a certified gold <laughs> song that you wrote on, which we'll talk about later. So you Thank literally you. are gold. Thank you so much. Wow. Yeah. That means a lot. Yeah. Well, I, I want to like deep dive in your brain and how it works. So take me from the top, from the beginning. When did you start songwriting? Do you remember writing your first song? I do. I was 11 years old and... I had just gotten a tape recorder from my dad for my birthday because mm -hmm. he was also writing songs and he was encouraging me to do it too. The song was called Turn It Off and it was kind of a rip of Stevie Wonder's Sign Seal Delivered, like the same okay. chords. Because uh -huh. I wasn't really consciously aware of like making like truly original ideas yet. I was just like, oh, I, I want to do a song that sounds like that. Uh -huh. um, it was not very good. I, and so, but I distinctly remember writing it and being like, okay, now I have the, the itch has started uh -huh. and now I will never not write songs ever again. Yeah. I feel like that's how everyone starts. Like you have to sort of copy something to yeah. figure out your own thing and what you are originally. How old were you then? I was 11. 11. So I'm 26 now. So yeah, it's been a journey. And then how'd you get into a boy band? So I was doing audition. I grew up in Los Angeles and I, from a very young age, realized I wanted to perform. And so that's kind of naturally what you do in Los Angeles is you kind of start going on auditions for singing, dancing, acting, like all of it. Mm -hmm. And there was an audition for a boy band. Simon Fuller, who created American Idol, was putting it together. And I saw that and immediately thought, I, oh, I have to, I have to do this. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow I got into the band and uh, you know, the rest is history. Yeah, somehow you have an incredible voice. Oh, thanks. No, I, I just, it, it, it's just one of those things where, yeah, I still can't kind of, I, I really can't wrap my head around that whole experience and how crazy and amazing it was. Does it feel like ages ago? Yeah, I mean, it feels like another lifetime because yeah. I was 13 when I auditioned for the group. Mm -hmm. I was, and I stayed in that group from age 14 to 18 and now I'm 26, so it was yeah. a long time ago. A long time ago. And you acted as well. Yes. With them. On what was it called, Disney? Boys. Yeah, we we did a we did some. Well, we, we we sang a song for a Disney movie, and then we also did like these little appearances and different things. It was it, it was a, it was a fun time. Yeah, with Bella Thorne. Yes, I saw that video. That was yeah, so funny. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> and you also auditioned for The Voice in China. I did. Just another lemon tree. I was reading the comments. Someone said, like, how do you sound like you have auto-tune on, but you don't? It's nah. just, like, perfect. So the notes are perfect. Yeah, no. I will say I got a lot of time to prepare and rehearse. Hmm. I got about two to three weeks of rehearsals. And, yeah, in China, they don't really mess around. They okay. kind of they want everyone to be their absolute best. So Interesting. It's different, you think, than the America voice? You know, I don't know. I honestly, I haven't really talked to anybody about that. Um at, like the behind the scenes aspect of it but I mean I'd imagine they get a lot of time too but mm -hmm. yeah I had a lot of time to prepare but that's very but that's very nice yeah so fast forward to now you just yes. released an EP someone on the internet I did yeah talk to me about the story behind that the concept behind that EP yeah um so I'd written the song someone on the internet and I had a few different songs and they I was kind of in this phase where I was really tired of writing about myself because mm. I felt like I had kind of <laughs> explored so much of my own brain through like my um, previous songs that I was like, well, let me like write songs that are inspired by other people. And so it kind of, as I was writing them, it kind of became this thing where I realized that they were all about people that I'd met in LA mm. and they were all kind of stories about people that are trying to be somebody, you know, on the internet or just in, in make it in Los Angeles. And yeah, so they're, they're kind of like little, I almost kind of think of them as like little paintings or like little vignettes of different people that I've met here. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of the inspo behind it. 
and like the bad and good things mm-hmm. that come with trying to be someone yeah. on the internet. I love the music video for the title track. Oh, thank you're like, you. You're on for we the camera. We shot it in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah, how you like conceptualized being like smiley and then you're like screaming. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think it's just so interesting when you realize that yeah, it's like you can only really showcase so much of yourself on the internet, you know, when the mm. camera is on, like you 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 don't really get to it's hard to like really honestly in my opinion give true vulnerability on that platform and, and that medium because it's like you only get a minute or 30 seconds to kind of mm. grab somebody's attention. And I also think that yeah, the juxtaposition of who you are in real life versus like when a camera is on you is just a very interesting concept to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of the reason we talked about this, why I wanted to start this podcast is having like an hour, 30 minutes to like talk real stuff about what the internet's like and trying to be a musician. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's an interesting world for it's sure. It's wild. And you get to experience it because you songwrite with a lot of different artists. Mm-hmm. So you probably hear some wild stories as you're songwriting of people everyone's trying to make it in different ways. Um, how do you try to break through the music industry? Cause you're not like, I wouldn't consider you like social media first. Yeah. You're like music first. So yeah, I mean, honestly this year, a big goal of mine is just to really um, embrace social media more than I have in the past. I think, yeah, I, I think before, cause I, yeah, I started out in the band mm-hmm. and we were, we were, it was very integrated with social media. Like we were very, very active. Um, and as I've kind of gotten older, it's just, it, and I, you know, I'm writing for other people and I'm kind of living my life. It's like, it's just hard for me to, to want, just to like want to, you know, put myself out there in that way. Mm-hmm. And I, I, and I'm realizing that I'm, that's a disservice to myself. Cause I think that's just how, how people consume music now mm-hmm. is through TikTok and through, you know, really, they want to kind of know the entire scope of who you are, not just as an artist and your music, but like kind of who you are on a human level. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's a goal from of mine is to is to really be more social media first and for or balance balance it with the energy and effort that I put into the music yeah because I I appreciate that you kind of keep the traditional like rollout form of releasing an full project and yeah. EP or an album is there like a story behind that or that's just how you like to create music um I mean it's I I just love I mean I I really just love telling stories I think at the end of the day and you you know I I've had periods years where I would just put out one you know singular songs and I, I put out an album in 2020 and then, you know, I just put out someone on the internet and yeah, I, I like listening to a, I, I, I'm somebody who really enjoys listening to something top to bottom mm-hmm. and, you know, really getting to get a whole experience. You know, my goal too is to kind of trigger like a visual component when people listen, you know, I want people to feel like they're in a world or they're seeing a music video as they're listening to the songs. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I personally just love long form because I love sitting down and watching a movie for two hours. I love, you know, investing in a TV show. And I, I think music can provide the same experience. Yeah. If you know, if you want, if you want it. One of my favorite songs of yours is Was It Even Real, which was a single. Like, oh, yeah. I, think a year or two I love ago. that one. And I noticed on your Instagram, you posted like this text string. You forgot that the song oh, was dropping. It's so <laughs> embarrassing. I really, I truly, I truly thought that it was coming out a week later and then it was out and I was getting text messages about it. And that was, that was very embarrassing. Is that, do you usually like have a promotional strategy or is that like a off thing you didn't remember? I. You know, it's it's funny. I feel like I my level of str- uh, intention, I guess, and strategy just depends on the song, honestly, because mm-hmm. that was one that it was it, it was just I just kind of wanted to have it out. I don't I didn't really think too much about it, hence why I got that <laughs> release yeah. date wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it, it really just varies, and and that's an, honestly another goal of mine is just to really be intentional with everything I put out, like really feeling like I gave it my best shot, you know, mm-hmm. to be heard. 
So that song feel like it wasn't, you weren't passionate about it? Yeah, honestly, that was, th- that whole year, 2021, um, I put out, I think, four or five songs that year. And I I was, I think I was like in an interesting headspace where I felt like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I was in a, I, I feel like my, I was writing a lot of stuff for other artists and I feel like I, my, um, attention towards my own music kind of took a backseat so yeah i think honestly the was it even real not remembering the release date just it feels like that like i was just so distracted by a bunch of other things that Mm -hmm. just wasn't really like locked in yeah well even distracted or not locked in it was a great song thank you no i i I still love all the songs it just yeah you know it's stuck on my playlist for I love like that. yeah, and I'm I'm always replacing songs, but that song's been consistent for me. I love I that love song. that so much. Thank yeah. you. Another song I like of yours is um, "Bleeding Melodies" off mm. of the new album. And it's so relatable for an artist. Like, yeah the first verse going to a show and no one shows up or it's like just your friends and family. Is that a personal experience song or totally? I mean it. Yeah, it's interesting. I think that song was, well, actually the story behind the title was I was talking to somebody who's signed to the same publishing company that I'm signed to. Mm -hmm. And he was actually talking about, uh, he was talking about JP Sachs randomly. He's friends with JP Sachs. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, that dude, I swear that dude would bleed melodies. And when he said that, I was like, oh, that I have to make that a song. Yeah. I find like a lot of my inspiration just comes from things that people say mm. and or like something that I'll read and I'll just, if it like sparks a thought, I like kind of run with it. But um, yeah, that, I mean, that song is a very autobiographical kind of look into what life kind of looks like for me and has looked like where, you know, I'm doing my thing and I'm very grateful to be where I'm at, but it's still, I'm still nowhere near where I want to be. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm still playing those shows where the room is pretty empty and, Mm -hmm. um, still having the thought process of questioning if, if it's meant for me in, in the, in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I appreciate that you like that one because yeah. uh, I uh, I hope that it provides comfort for artists because it's it's not it's not easy. Yeah, knowing that you're not alone and like Absolutely. that no one shows up and someone like you who like has a good following and has great music, it still happens to you. It's like okay, I'm not the only one. Totally, no. It's I, I think people, especially now in a in a in a world where like it's so driven by metrics and numbers, I feel mm-hmm. like doesn't necessarily translate to ticket sales Mm -hmm. and as somebody who you know like that's my biggest goal is to like play really great shows and like really have that like in-person connection with people it's it's definitely disheartening yeah but you know i i just don't want to do anything else so you know i'm gonna make it happen one way or the other and how do you like sell out shows you're saying like followers doesn't translate to tickets so how does that work in a practical way yeah i mean it's i think it it's just i mean i'm literally reaching out to people specifically that i know are in certain places and Mm -hmm. i mean in the in the past that's what i that's what i've done and and, i mean in in los angeles you know you have to i send a text a personal text to every single friend of mine and i'm like Hey, it would mean a lot if you came. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully they bring friends. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and that's that. I mean, not to. another Like a side. I'm just realizing now, like with Bleeding Melodies, I, I feel like. The, the the shows that I've been doing in L.A. the last couple of years, it's, it feels like it's like mostly my friends there, which is amazing. And I love my friends mm-hmm. very much. But, you know, I would love to be in a position where it feels like the room is packed with people that are just like, just love my music. And I'm not saying my friends don't, I'm not <laughs> shitting on my friends, but, but it, yeah, it's, it's a little, I would love to get to a place where I feel like it's not, people aren't, 
the room isn't mostly filled with people that I personally asked to be there, mm-hmm. you know? Like, if I send out a tweet or I post my Instagram, like, hey, I'm playing a show, I, don't, I wouldn't have to stress about, you know, yeah, selling tickets. But, you know, that's just... That's just the name of the game until it isn't. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep doing it. Keep yeah. working. You have to pay your dues. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not worried about that at all. I've been playing the long game. I'm, I've been doing this <laughs> since I was 13. So. Yeah. A long time. You know. Yeah. Still kicking it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, how do you write a song? In terms of just in general or? Yeah. Do you start on piano? Do you start with vocals? Oh, At okay. Least, got it. Yeah. Um, Usually... I really love having a title or a concept. Um, it, it it honestly depends. For myself, I really love having a um, a title, and I usually start at the piano, mm. and I then I'll bring it to somebody to kind of produce it out and help um, kind of create like the sonics around it. Um, it it depends. But usually that, for my myself, that's usually a process. I usually come up with a concept. I sit down at the piano. I flesh it out. And then and then bring it to somebody. Mm-hmm. For other artists, it's, it's different. It's totally different, though. Yeah. You, know, you kind of have to chameleon yourself to whatever their process is. And kind of... Phineas actually had a really great quote about how it's like playing human Tetris. Mm-hmm. Where you kind of have to go, go in and kind of assess what your role is is for the day do i need to you know is somebody is this artist just like free-flowing all their ideas and i just have to shape it and edit am i the one that kind of has to come in with the you know a lot of the ideas um is it a back and forth like there's it's just just different every single time yeah i watched a podcast with him talking about writing with artists and when he first started he felt like he had to prove himself in session and was sometimes then like diminishing what the artist wanted because he was trying to to prove himself and i feel like i've only written with a few people um but i definitely feel that like you're always trying to prove yourself like i can write i can be here. oh totally to be here. no it's it it's yeah I, I think once you remove that insecurity mm-hmm. and fear of you know whatever feeling like you didn't prove that you could be a songwriter Mm -hmm. i think it just makes it so much more fun and easier i think it's easier to get a song done because nobody is getting in the way of whatever the vibe is of that day you know i think that's i think that's always kind of tough to you know i've been a victim of it myself but to kind of watch somebody kind of get in their own way Mm -hmm. and and overthink things when you know none of us know what we're doing like i mean we have our own metric for what we think is really good and we we like what we all like but none of us like have this secret to writing an amazing song you just have to kind of go with what feels good yeah and you wrote the huge song overwhelmed I get crazy overwhelmed. So easy. yeah it's an awesome song i think it has like a hundred million streams on Spotify over yeah, that, I think. It's crazy. You that have the plaque over there, certified I gold. I do. I still need to hang it up. I feel, I feel bad. It's got to be <laughs> hung up. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So how did that happen? What was the songwriting process? It was really, I, that story, the whole story about that song. And I, I, I feel like it's like, there's the, uh, there's many parts to it. So if I, you can cut me off at any point, but it <laughs> is a, uh, it is just it's just a really interesting story. I um been doing it was 2019 when that song was written. Mm-hmm. I had been doing a bunch of sessions just kind of really I was really gung ho on I want to get a publishing deal. I want to write for other people simultaneously working on my own stuff. So I was just putting myself out there doing, you know, I was knocking on everybody's door sending out cold emails every single day just I at that point I had you know I was working with a few people but I was still the one really leading the charge in terms of I want to write with people Mm -hmm. and my manager at the time randomly got connected to another manager at some 
event i guess they i guess managers have events where they like meet other managers okay um (laughs) sounds fun and yeah and he was like yeah there's this he manages this girl royal and the serpent would you like to work with her and i was like sure absolutely Mm -hmm. um and we met and it was great and we did like back to back we did about four or five songs together and overwhelmed was the third one i think that we'd written Mm. and later that year and she she was really uh doing a bunch of shows and that's how she got signed to atlantic because someone at atlantic went to one of her shows and was like i want to sign you Mm. and it and then 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 a few months later found out that overwhelmed was going to be her first song and I was surprised because I honestly thought that was like the third best one out of the four that we did. Okay. Um, there was an, there was two more that I like. I honestly liked more, but I was like, cool, Overwhelmed's coming out. And so the Overwhelmed was, it was supposed to come out in June of 2020. And if you remember, that was when all the George F- Floyd protests were happening. Okay. And so when all that started happening, um, they were kind of scrambling like how what, like how what are we going to do about and covid was you know it's like what are we going to do to make this song mm-hmm. work um so royal and her manager and her mom put four thousand dollars into a marketing campaign on tiktok mm. and that four thousand dollars is why the song is has 100 million streams because they gathered enough en- enough influencers to make videos to the song and it just completely exploded yeah that's crazy. it just a cra- it, it, it's just crazy because you know now this you know now the song did what it did and you know i have a plaque to hang on my wall but like mm-hmm. nobody expected it at all yeah and i don't even think they did i think they thought four thousand dollars was like let's see what we can get mm-hmm. you know let's try to maybe get like a little a little moment for it on tiktok and it it yeah I just, I say that because it, it just, it feels like, it's like so random, but also so magical in the sense of like anything is possible. And if you believe in something, mm-hmm. just like go for it, you yeah. know, because you never know. And have enough belief to like put money behind it and push yeah. it. And yeah. I yeah. It was probably perfect timing for that song to come out considering what was going on in the world. Yeah. You know, I think about that too. You know, everyone was so it was still so uncertain. Everyone was so scared. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember getting just reading through so many comments of people that were like, yeah, this is like a really timely song, mm. but it's just so funny. Cause we wrote in 2019 yeah, and we were writing the song about me and her actually were bonding over that. We both kind of experienced really intense sensory overload in certain places. You know, like there's the, the lyrics and the verse are like, you know, turn off the TV. It's starting to freak me out. It's like mm-hmm. so loud, you know, it's like we both, just don't do well under like we when you walk into like a club or something and like it's so blaring like I just like shut down mm-hmm. and and that's what the song is about yeah so it's just funny that that a song about that but you know it became like a kind of timely thing about how everyone's freaking out about the world yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah I'm very I'm very very proud of that to be to have been a part of that it was really it's def. I mean, it definitely changed my life in a lot of ways. So, yeah. The other songs that you had written with her, did they make the album? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So all all four of them came out at different at different points. Um. And, uh, yeah, I'm very. It's just crazy. Like we met when she was still working at a coffee shop, mm. and you know now she's opening for Fall Out Boy. Like it just yeah. it's just really it's just crazy to kind of see how one song just changes everything it really changes everything your song lies has like 10 million streams that's the thing i never think any of my songs that have done well i never expect it Mm. and any song and so that's i I think that's been a huge lesson for me and i think I, i i really think anybody who is putting themselves out there needs to remember that you the only expectation you should have is that you did your best. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, I, I feel like once you put something out, you have no control over, you can put your best foot forward, you can promote it. And that honestly, that's a huge part of why I want to be more social media first is that I feel like I can definitely do more on my end to make, to feel like I put, I tried everything to make something work, mm-hmm. but there is no, 
determining what is going to kind of work or hit the algorithm or whatever. Yeah. Um, and in my own experience, my, yeah, Lies is my most streamed song by far. And I had no expectation that that was going to do anything. Yeah. So. Was I, there like a social media push with no, that one? No. Not at all. I, I mean, I had a music video and it was the first song off of Perfectionist, the album that I did in 2020. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like excited about it. I was, you know, I was, this is a new vibe for me and I'm, I'm definitely excited to put this out. And I think I'm, I'm trying to, I actually just read Rick Rubin's book. I don't know if you've read it. Uh-uh. It's really, really good. You should read it. Okay. Um, it's called The Creative Act. Um, but he, it's, it's just amazing. But, but the, my, a lot of, a, a huge takeaway of mine from that book was just the only competition you are in is the one with yourself. Mm. And the best, the best songs and the best work that you make is just, is simply the stuff that you're excited about. And I think that if you put something out and obviously you want it to do well, obviously you want it to connect with people. But if you feel like, if you feel proud of it, if you feel like somebody hands you an ox and you would be excited to play it for them, Mm -hmm. that's like the win. Yeah. Because I, I just, there've been so many situations where I put out stuff that I just wasn't that excited about. Mm -hmm. And even if it did kind of well, I was like, meh, like this isn't really a reflection of me. This isn't something that I'm excited about. Whereas a song like lies, I was, I had no expectations, but I was stoked on it Mm. and, and it did well. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that, but I just feel like it's important to, to not worry about the things you can't control and just focus on making the best art you can possibly make. Well, moving forward, do you think you won't release a song unless you're like super excited about it? I think so. At this point, you know, I've, and honestly looking at it from the lens of, being a songwriter for other people mm-hmm. and I've seen kind of songs that I've been a part of, you know, like an overwhelmed or, or, or just any, I've written m- many songs for many artists that I've, you know, that have done well for them. Mm-hmm. And I'm like thinking to myself in the back of my brain, like, well, shit, like maybe <laughs> I should, you know, maybe I should write a song like that for myself. Mm-hmm. And I think that it's just a disservice to, to yourself to to feel like you should do something that someone else is doing even Mm. though I wrote helped write songs for other people I'm like no but that's I'm that song is working because that person that artist is that's who they are Mm -hmm. you know and that is not who I am so Mm. I shouldn't try to be like anybody else um and to to the point that I just made earlier I think if I'm not excited about it, then it's not my best. That's convicting what you said about not wanting to be an other artist. Like you'll see a super popular song. You're like, maybe I should write a song like that. Totally. That's totally me. Cause you can get insecure about is what I'm creating good enough. Um, and it might not be something that's like universally popular and that can make me at least second guess my work. Like, should I create something that's going to be a hit or should I create something that I'm passionate about? And you answered that. It should always be what you're passionate about. Yeah. I mean, and it's a, I think it's just all about to what, for me, another thing that kind of brings me a lot of peace with that is thinking about what kind of company you want to be in. Mm. You know, do you want your name as an artist to be, when, when your name comes up, do you want to be thought of as somebody who is just kind of chasing trends? Mm. And, listen, some people do that amazingly. There's yeah. no judgment at all. Or, you know, it's it, it. who are your favorite artists? And do you want, if you want your music and your name to be in the same conversation, you should approach how you create the way they do. Mm. You know, if you want to be, yeah. I mean, I think about that a lot. Like my favorite artists are all people who are very singular and who have done their own thing and are steadfast and have not really catered to trends or to the sound that is hot or popular. Mm -hmm. And they have really long successful careers as a result of that. And that's what I'm striving for. And I honestly wish that I was better at the trends because I'd probably, you know, be, you know, further along, but 
again, I'm playing the long game, so I'm not, I'm not stressed about that. Yeah. What do you see yourself doing on social media when you're going to get into it? I would love to, in a not preachy or cheesy way, I'd love to give advice to artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I see a lot of people on TikTok kind of outlining every aspect of their process and every facet of what they of what it takes to be an artist and what they do. And I, I really respond and resonate with that content. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think I would love for people to kind of see, get a behind the curtain look of my life. Cause they're, you know, even though it feels boring and mundane to me, you know, I, I, I get to do some cool stuff and, yeah. you know, I would love to, I know we were talking earlier about, I mean, the reason why you started this podcast was you wanted kind of to give mid mid level artists a platform. Mm -hmm. And I think similarly there's so many people that are gonna listen to this that are scared to put out that first song or scared mm -hmm. to put themselves out there and don't really have that uh because they don't really have that advice or that are listening to the right people that are gonna encourage them to kind of put themselves out there because you know it's very easy for somebody at the top to be like, believe in yourself. Like you can yeah. do it, but it's like, well you're <laughs> that that's sweet and nice but uh -huh. you know you are so far removed from where you were at when you started yeah you know even though it's contradictory to the someone on the internet song i i really want to just try my best to be myself yeah and, you know and that tra just like in music when you're authentic on screen with a video that'll cut across too Definitely. whatever is you will people will notice that and pay attention i'll be watching those videos later. i appreciate that i hope so. <laughs> i hope so i mean i think yeah, I think there's also a fear of putting yourself out there because you're just worried about judgment. You know, mm -hmm. you're worried about what people are going to say. I think for me, a, a huge part of my complex is just feeling like I don't really have a lot to offer outside of music, outside of my musical abilities. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I still sometimes struggle with my my social anxiety is feeling like, well, I am definitely good at writing songs. I'm definitely good at singing. The talking, not so much. <laughs> You've been great thus far. No, I appreciate that. No, it, and, and I've I've gotten a lot better at yeah. you know being like sure of myself and being confident. But you know, everyone's on a journey, a different journey, yeah. and I think that's a huge part of what stops me from putting out putting myself out there. And I know I could just sing and I could play the music, but I think a large a large part of people on that succeed on TikTok, there's there is a getting to know the person, mm -hmm. you know, and. uh yeah, I just, I sometimes get a little insecure about that. But yeah. I think that's what this year is about for me, is just breaking down all of my previous insecurities and anxieties and just kind of realizing what, what's the point? What is, like, who does, I feel like I, re I realize a lot of my anxiety comes from this place of feeling like I need to humble myself. Mm. And it's like, but who is telling me that? What? And what does anxiety serve? It only makes myself smaller. Nobody cares about me enough right. to be like, you need to humble yourself. It's that, yeah. that, that voice in my head is not coming from anywhere. I feel that too. You know? Yeah, like talking in front of a camera, like I'm saying in my head, like, oh, you think you're so special that people are going to care about what you have to say? Yeah. Like I say that to myself, like, who's saying that to me? No one. I'm saying that to myself. But it's a very real thing yeah i think the ego is just a strange it's a strange thing and i yeah. think when you're an artist it it's just so present because you don't really because you're having this relationship with yourself and you're mm -hmm. making art and you have to spend a lot of time with yourself and i think as a result of that you are just so hyper aware of your own brain mm -hmm. and i think also in a career field where there is no you do A and you'll get B. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like everybody is chasing after the same thing, but everybody's path to success is so vastly different. Yeah. Um, and what works for somebody will not work for you. Or it, or it might. You mm -hmm. know, there's it, it just question marks everywhere. And I think with that comes a lot of doubt and insecurity. But yeah, it's just what... Th that's truly my biggest goal of this year is just to feel like I led I did the entire year and led with confidence and mm -hmm. woke up in the morning and you know what I'm gonna even if I feel kind of weird I'm gonna do my best and there are gonna be days but I'm gonna do my best to be confident always and mm -hmm. make confident choices because 
why not? What is the point of listening to the voice in your head that tells you that you suck? There's just no, it's only, you're only doing a disservice to yourself. Nobody else is thinking that. Mm -hmm. It's real though. It's very real. It's very real. Yeah. Uh, Your album Perfectionist at the very bottom of the album, you have like writing a song part one, writing Mm -hmm. a song part two. And they're like 30 second clips of a song. Were those just unfinished songs or what is that? So, so I had this idea that I, it was actually originally a three. So each one was a minute on the Mm -hmm. album, but it was originally a three minute song. Okay. Just those three put together. I wanted to kind of create this song that became three songs, but I wanted to create this little musical, I guess, vignette of the highs and lows of creativity. So it's like the first idea is um, the, the doubt and the insecurity that you'll ever have a good idea again. And then the second one was an, a really good idea coming and being so swept away by it and being like this romantic thing where it's like, oh my God, like this is amazing. And then the moment that that idea is gone, it's like you're back to square one. And I think, yeah, it, 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 they, they're, they were meant to be short on purpose because it's like creativity is just so fleeting, you know, mm-hmm. and ideas just come and go. And, you know, I find that constantly. I'm, I write something really great and then I'm like, ah, what do I do next? Like, mm-hmm. is any, you know, you're only as good as the last thing you wrote. So, yeah. it, you know, it, it, that's an insecure thought, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you, you want to feel like you're continuously making great stuff. And then when you feel like there's a lull, it's, it's kind of, it's disheartening. And it's kind of scary because mm-hmm. you're just nervous that you'll never <laughs> have a good idea again yeah um I'm really glad you said that because I'm in that spot right now mm. I had some really good music a couple of years ago and then I'm like okay what now yeah who am I what do I want to be what am I creating and you can get into like sort of a writer's block too because you can write something and be like no it's trash and go to the next thing and just keep writing stuff until you feel like you really you have to always be topping yourself totally when you're releasing music at least that's how I feel for myself but yeah, I think I think because I've I've experienced all this all those same feelings, especially you know, and it's hard not to. It's hard not to look at numbers and metrics. You know, Lies mm-hmm. came out in twenty twenty. I've yet to put out a song that even comes close to what that song did. Mm-hmm. And so in my brain, I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm make I'm making better music, but the world is not reflecting that back on me. Mm-hmm. Um, something a, a a thought that's really helped me a lot is is realizing that the music that you put out at two, you know, for you two years ago, for me, 2023 years ago, it's, it's meant to be a snapshot of where you were at that point in your life. So there's no point in comparing your, the work you're making now to that music because it is literally just a chapter in the book of your life. Mm. You know, you're on to the next, you're literally on to the next chapter. Um, I totally get feeling like, stuck and wanting to feel like the creativity is flowing naturally and 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 something that helps me too is honestly writing for other artists is really lovely because it Mm. i'm showing up i'm work i'm flexing that creative muscle and there's a little less pressure to you know say something completely original inventive because it's you know somebody else's story and somebody else i'm just trying to help shape that for them yeah um but if you show up and you keep doing the keep trying I I, you know the ideas will come back I feel like I great ideas come to people who are just trying to find them yeah trial and error yeah yeah what are some other songs that you've written for other people um that are out or just yeah um or not but yeah yeah I mean I've it, it it's interesting I feel like there's a it's like I've in the last couple of years, it's been like a very wide spectrum of, you know, I've done some K-pop stuff, mm. um, worked with some artists. I've done, uh, a couple songs for the high school musical Disney plus show mm-hmm. randomly got nominated for an Emmy last year. Cause yes. I did a song for a Disney movie called Sneakerella. Um, incredible. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it you know, it's, it's fun. It's, it's like, uh, I love feeling like a chameleon, you know, and I love, my dream is to just like write 
big songs in every genre. You know, I want to have a, I want to have a country hit. I want to have a pop mm-hmm. hit. I want to have, I want to write amazing songs for fee- TV and film. I, I mean, like being an EGOT is like, that's like a huge lofty dream of mine. But you know, yeah. I'm, you, I feel like you, you need to have the lofty dreams because yeah. it, it, it makes, yeah. And I'll, I'm even like, as I'm saying that, I'm like, why is that a lofty dream? You know? You're already on your way. I'm on my way, you yeah. know? And, and, and yeah, it's, it's not, it's, it's a big dream, but it's not unattainable because mm-hmm. if it was unattainable, no one would have it. Yeah. You know, is if it's like, I, if that's like, I, if I said I want to grow wings like that, that is an unattainable goal. You <laughs> yes. know, that, yeah. that, that's not going to happen yeah. as much as I would probably you know, love that. Probably yeah. not. Yeah. Is there one dream that's bigger than the other, like your own artistry or writing for other artists? Is one a bigger dream of yours? I mean, at the end of the day, I got into this being an artist and I think I would love, I think for me as an artist, it's, I really just want to find whatever my lane is and I just want to play really amazing shows all over the world and and sing and sing my songs and feel like I am a small part of the soundtrack of today whatever that looks like and whatever that means um you know I I think about there's so many artists I love that aren't on the radio that aren't these like pop culture juggernauts Mm. but have amazing careers and play amazing venues and have like really amazing fan bases and that that's really something that I I look up to that. You know, I really want that more yeah. than anything else. Yeah, you don't need to be the biggest star in the world. No, it, it, I, I want to create. And But here's the thing. Like f- on the songwriting side, I would love to write songs for all those big artists. Mm-hmm. I would love to be in the room when they're creating, mm-hmm. you know, their albums. And yeah, it's, it's an interesting place where I feel like neither of my, neither, neither side has really exploded. You know, I'm, I'm doing my thing in both fields and, I'm I'm also kind of in a place where I'm just gonna go with the flow and naturally wherever wherever I feel like it the energy is I'm gonna go mm. and I feel like they all feed into each other too you know you look at I, I, m- my main inspirations are people who I feel like do both you know John Bellion mm. Charlie XCX Ryan Tedder Pharrell you know yep. they have really respectable careers in both sides and. Yeah, that's the company I want to be in. Yeah. And, and it's funny because like I look at you that way as a smaller artist. And I think other people do too. That you've done and accomplished incredible things and written awesome songs and you have awesome music out. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah. and that that's very, very important for me to hear because mm. it's interesting. I think once, once you get, I think that's another thing that people underestimate is once you get really in it. Mm-hmm. It's the whole like more money, more problems thing where it's not even that I'm making that much more money, but, (laughs) but I, but like you're in a different class of people and you're looking around and everybody's doing really cool shit. And then you're looking at your inward, like, well, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that yet. And it like makes you kind of forget your own accomplishments and, Mm -hmm. and how far you've come. And, you know, I think I, it, you're almost like envious of the problems you used to have because it's like, oh, well, I, I was, all I wanted to do was to be seen and to be heard. Mm. And then you get a taste of that and it's like, well, I'm not seen as heard and heard as much as that person. Yep. And so I feel like a failure because of that, mm-hmm. you know? And then, you know, I think about, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just crazy because everybody is always looking to somebody, looking up to somebody, mm-hmm. but I'm looking up to somebody else and they're looking up to somebody else and they're looking up to somebody else it's, it's never ending it's never ending you know and i think it's also important at whatever stage you're into and in, to appreciate and be grateful for what you have already accomplished you know i think anybody who is brave enough to put themselves out there is you're already further ahead than countless people if you put out a song i i i just i have countless names in my head of people that are too scared to do that who have songs on a hard drive that are ready to go and just don't want to put them out because they're they're scared of failure or they're scared of you know 
nobody wanting to listen yeah. and yeah it's it's uh it's funny but i really appreciate you saying that because that yeah. is i was kind of going through something a couple days ago where i was like really really envious of somebody close to me mm -hmm. and it just kind of sent me in the spiral that envy and jealousy does you know mm -hmm. where you just second guess all of your not even just your accomplishments but like your ability to to do it you know mm -hmm. i'm like well that hasn't happened for me yet will it ever mm -hmm. you know and that's that's never a good place to be in. So I appreciate that. Yeah. You expressed that in your song, Must Be Nice. Must be nice to have everything that you want in life. I did. Very that well. was, oh. <laughs> you know what's so funny is that that song was, <clears throat> the part about the record deal uh -huh. was inspired by Royal and the Serpent. Okay. And I told her that. So that's it's not so like, funny. it's not Before news. you met her? No, Sorry. when, when. We were writing and then she got signed to Atlantic. Okay. The, the, you got a record deal. How does it feel? I wouldn't yeah. know. Um, that was inspired by her. <laughs> okay. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that, you know, it's funny. That song is, it's just such a, do you ever like listen back to your music and think, wow, I was really in a, I was really in an interesting place when mm -hmm. I wrote that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But even... it was everyone feels that and it was honest. Yeah. Like it's it's maybe a negative side of yourself, but everyone experiences that. Totally. And that's I mean, that's what that whole project was, was like I want to reveal all of like the weird parts of your brain that like you don't really like shedding light on. Mm -hmm. You know, must be nice was jealousy. Lies was this desire to impress people and and at the expense of telling the truth you know mm -hmm. there was yeah i love that yeah no it's a uh, that song is so I, that's one of the songs too that i just can't really do you ever do you ever feel weird listening to your old music i hate listening to my own music yeah, yeah. i it, when people you know when people tell me that they like that song, I, I I have to I skip that song when it comes when I if it ever comes on rotation I I'm like I don't I don't want to listen to Is that. Is it because it's a negative side of yourself or the sonics of it? I think both. I think now I'm just in such a different headspace that it just feels like pulling myself down when mm -hmm. I listen to it. And honestly, lies similarly. I mean, I think that song is the production of that song is fantastic and I really do enjoy it from that standpoint. But if I like actually start to listen to what I was saying, I'm like, Ooh, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've done too much therapy and work on myself to mm -hmm. like really want to go back there. Yeah. But like you said earlier, it's a chapter in your book Absolutely. and you're on to the next page. Yeah. No. And, and that's, that's a beautiful thing to also feel like you're evolving and growing as a person and the work that you're making reflects that. Mm hmm is a it's fun to like look at my own evolution um so you're already working on new music mm -hmm. you just released an ep but you're already on to the next thing oh yeah no it's it, it's never i'm i feel like a lot of artists are that way too where it's like yeah. you've got you got an album even before it's out you're already working on the next stuff mm -hmm. so i've got within the last couple of weeks i've written three songs that i absolutely love mm -hmm. and i'm definitely going to put out later in the year um they're just so different from this last project that it's kind of hard to compare them. I've spent a lot of time really obsessing over production and really obsessing over the glossy, perfect, wanting everything to be really, you know, I naturally have good pitch, but like I really like my voice to be like really spot on pitch wise. Mm -hmm. And so I'm excited because I think these new songs are a little more raw in every sense. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to do like the crazy production anymore i don't think i'm going to do the you know I, I want it to be i want it to feel a little bit simpler mm. um not the songs but the but the music behind it okay so i'm excited for that i'm yeah. excited to feel like i'm exposing myself even more than i have in the past yeah i'm excited for that too yeah, yeah. so you performed as four town i did explain what that is and what that performance was okay so for anyone who doesn't know, Four Town is the fictitious boy band that's in the Disney Plus movie Turning Red. Mm. The Pixar movie. The Pixar movie Turning Red. And I loved that movie when it came out. I think 
I've been a huge advocate for any Asian American stories Mm -hmm. being told. And I think it's amazing to see how many in the last couple years have made it to the big screen. Randomly got a text from a friend of a friend and they were like, Hey, we're putting on a live performance of four town for this, um, uh, gala. It was called this company called character media who does a bunch of is really, uh, pro Asian Americans in Hollywood. Mm. We're putting together this gala and we want to do a performance of four town. Um, but, and we wanted all the original members, but two of them pulled, uh, couldn't make it at the last second, um, for scheduling reasons. Mm. Would you be down? And they, I got that call 24 hours before the actual performance. My goodness. When we were, we did a morning rehearsal and the guy who was helping us do our movement coaching, kind of helping us map out the um, performance, he was like, okay, there were two songs in the, in the medley that we did. And it was the, ba- the first one was the slower one. And he was like, okay, at this moment, walk down the stairs and whoever is sitting directly, um, in front of the stage on stage right just like serenade them Uh and i was like cool amazing and we're on stage and we kind of that parts in the medley starts happening and i'm like you got like you i cannot believe that sandra O is the person that is sitting there right Uh now and we're all just about to just like serenade her like pounding I, (laughs) i i didn't realize how how big of an event it was gonna be i didn't realize that Sandra O oh, was going to be be there. Yeah. Um yeah, and then and then when it started going viral and ev- you know everybody's uh, yeah, it was it's just so funny. It just one of the it just set, was such a by chance random right place right time thing. And it really warms my heart how many people knew who I am 5 was cuz it, it that's also like a really crazy thing, you know, 8 9 years later t- for people still to be like Oh my God, I loved, I loved you. And I loved that band. Mm-hmm. It's, and I, st- you know, a lot of people are like, I still listen to your music or I, I'll check you out now. You know, it's, it's, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. To have those moments that people attach to. Totally. It's really cool. So final question. Okay. What is a dream so big that it scares you? I think my biggest dream, honestly, is just, I want to be in the conversation I've always I've always felt like there was a lack of representation of a, for Asian American mm-hmm. artists in not just Hollywood but in especially in music. And I think my biggest dream is to be in the company and in the conversation of Asian Americans who really did the damn thing and who mm-hmm. really like solidified themselves as a figure in 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 um entertainment. Yeah. So whatever that looks like, however I get there, you know, for my younger self who just like really wanted somebody to look up to, I think that is the dream that I think scares me the most because I really, I really want, I really want that more than anything. Hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I already said this a million times, but I think you're on your way if you haven't already made it there. I, I I, for the first time in my life feel like, tangible progress has been made you know Mm. now it's just about yeah just carrying myself with my head held high and and just having more faith and less doubt I think Mm. that's that's gonna be that's my main mantra I guess for this year yeah well thanks for sitting down with us thank you for having me this was so this was amazing this was so fun yeah I love talking with you same do this again sometimes absolutely yeah (laughs)